Hello, I'm Anne Tucker, Head of Research at MediaTel, and I'm going to take the next 10 minutes to run through some exclusive data around subscription VOD. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do a live Twitter Q&A. However, do drop down any questions as my contact details will be on screen at the end and I'd love to hear from you. The past six months have seen new players, new major players, launch their SVOD services with Apple TV Plus and BritBox at the back end of last year and Disney Plus in the UK a few weeks ago. So much choice for the consumer, but how many services do we need or want and how much money are we willing to spend for these services? All the research you see today is taken from MediaTel's established Connected Screens Tracker Survey, available exclusively within MediaTel's recently relaunched Consumer Surveys module, which acts as a search engine for media consumer trends. The Connected Screens Tracker has been running since 2014 and swiftly established a re reputation for robust and relevant data for the UK market, being media neutral and consumer centric, covering every screen. This data is from the second half of last year, when BritBox sounded exciting, when Apple Plus was launching, when Disney Plus was just a distant dream and coronavirus didn't even exist, simpler times. Perhaps it's a little early in the day, but if you're doing a drinking game of how many times the word coronavirus is mentioned throughout the day, there's another drink for you there. I'll try to keep references to it at a minimum. So let's do some scene setting. Currently, 54% of UK broadband households report personally using Netflix, following a steady increase in its footprint, more than double when we started in 2014. By comparison, Amazon Prime Video is currently used by 37%, despite having the advantage of being linked to the free delivery option that is so vital to Amazon's strategy. At the end of 2019, Apple TV Plus and BritBox both have very small usage at 2.3% and 1.2% respectively. The television set itself has increasingly become the screen of choice for SVOD viewing, with 46% of respondents now watching SVOD on a TV screen at least once a week, leaving other screens behind in its wake. By comparison, usage on other devices has stayed relatively flat. We've been studying the marketplace for nearly six years now, and we wanted to get a better understanding of how consumers feel these screen services are impacting their lives. For this latest wave, we added new questions around activities relating to SVOD subscriptions and price to get an understanding of the financial limitation around subscription VOD. In December at FTV London, I introduced some of the early findings, but we now have the full data set and over the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through these findings. We asked our respondents what impact they felt social media, online video services and online TV services were having on both society and their own personal life, and the results proved very interesting. Taking a traffic light approach, reds on the chart are either very negative or quite negative, whilst greens are quite or very positive. And at a quick glance, you see that the respondents considered that social media had had a predominantly negative impact on society, with 41% considering it negative and 17% thinking it had a negative effect on their life personally. Meanwhile, online video services such as YouTube were either positive or neutral, with no massive detrimental impact on society or personal life, whilst online TV services have had a positive effect on our personal lives and on society as a whole, and only 2% thinking they have a very negative effect on society. So clearly we're all fans of SVOD. So let's see how our sample reacted to a few hypotheses we threw at them. Here's the first, looking at how services like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video are a money-saving alternative to satellite and cable TV. Well, perhaps worryingly for satellite and cable providers, whilst SVOD has up to now largely complemented rather than replaced pay TV, it is seen as a potential money-saving alternative, with 64% slightly or strongly agreeing. Separating that out into different types of pay TV homes, it becomes apparent that is more the case for those who only use Netflix. In other words, for them, subscription VOD is enough and they simply don't need additional Sky or Virgin services. Well, how about the perception that they are saving money for not buying physical content? Well, the perception is that they are currently saving money by subscribing to these VOD services rather than buying or renting DVDs. So will this perception that SVOD is cheaper than physical media allow more price elasticity? Not necessarily, as the perception is that they add all their media expenditure together, including all those DVDs they were buying 10 years ago, they believe they are paying more in total on media now. Do consumers subscribe tactically to binge specific content? Well, over half of respondents do not currently capitalise on switching between services as much as they could, with 50% disagreeing that they ever subscribe for a short period and then cancel. However, this guy on Twitter is all for this sort of activity, setting his calendar around the cancellation dates. 
Netflix and Prime Video allow use by several devices, and Netflix is notoriously tolerant of password sharing as a means of increasing reach and potential new subscribers. 26% of our SVOD users let friends and family outside the home use their password, whilst 28% claim to use a password shared from outside the home. So password sharing is common, and at least from our data, the levels are pretty similar between Prime and Netflix. There's only so much money in people's pockets for these services, so just how much price elasticity is there in the UK market? Well, there's an increasing awareness of how much these services are costing and 44% of respondents agree that they are regularly reviewing how much they are spending on these TV and video services. Arguably, with less spontaneous or impulse purchasing on physical media, it's easier to tot up the total we spend on subscriptions each month. Is anyone trying to cut back? Well, 39% of those with subscriptions to pay TV or SVOD services claim to be actively cutting back on services already. Whether that is currently the case with children and adults crying out for content at home to relieve the boredom remains to be seen when the new fieldwork comes through in the summer. But at this stage, there was a, arguably a degree of price awareness and some desire to limit expenditure. We asked how much respondents thought they were spending on a monthly basis, specifically for the TV part of any subscription service. Clearly, it's hard to extract the broadband and any telephony service prices from a monthly bill, but most consider that their spend was between £20 to £39 each month, with the average slightly higher than that, unsurprisingly driven by Sky Homes, in which nearly 30% claimed to be paying more than £60 each month just for TV-related services. When Netflix or Prime subscribers are asked how much they are currently paying in total, the most common answer is between £10 and £19, in other words, the current actual combined total. Some estimate they are paying more than this, but note that this fieldwork was before the launch of Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus. When the new data comes through in the summer from this current fieldwork, it will be interesting to see how this number may have shifted following these big launches and, of course, the current situation. Will the spend rise as people will see this service um, as something new that they really want? Particularly in the short term, I would expect people to stretch the budget to accommodate Disney Plus, particularly to check out exactly what is offered by the service. However, as money becomes potentially tighter in households, it may be interesting to see which services face the cut. So the key question, what's the most people are willing to pay for a single SVOD service? This question is asked to all with pay TV and SVOD, so it does include some potential as well as current SVOD users. And perhaps a note of caution is warranted here, as past research shows that interviewees tend to be aware of how these surveys work, so can be loath to admit any openness to a price rise. Nonetheless, much has been written about £10 being a key threshold and our consumers confirm that. Clearly some will pay more than that, but it is a minority. Significantly, the answer is near identical for Netflix or Prime subscribers, so £10 seems key. That expectation around what an SVOD service costs is reflected in the conservative pricing of the newer entrants, Apple TV Plus at £4.99 in the UK, with BritBox and Disney Plus at £5.99. So to sum up our findings in the UK, Password sharing is common with 26% lending or 28% borrowing their login. A minority do dive in and out for specific content, but there is a fair degree of stasis. There is an awareness that streaming saves money versus physical media, but still most believe that they are paying more on media services nowadays. As a result, many are looking to cut back and claim to review their spending on TV and video services. And subscribers are fairly knowledgeable about what they pay for SVOD, although slightly less so in pay TV homes, and pay £10 per month is confirmed as a glass ceiling for a single streaming service. So the key question has to be whether advertising free SVOD services are econo economically sustainable at a price point of less than £10. Will a hybrid model be needed or is the lack of advertising a key element of the offer in the first place? And meanwhile, just a final thought. A senior executive in the publishing industry noted recently that Netflix had been a key development for them as it got consumers used to the idea of a media subscription, something that news brands have been struggling with as a model until recently, but are now seeing major growth. The concepts of subscriptions and paying for content had become normalised. However, their concern is now whether the competitive set has widened. With all your subscriptions handily listed on the same bank statement, will people review not just their SVOD subscriptions, but all their subscriptions on a wider basis? Their music streaming, their publications, even their arts or tech subscriptions. As we move further from physical to digital, from ownership to access, and so to a world of subscriptions, is the price pressure about to get a whole lot heavier? 
Well, as mentioned at the start, this fieldwork for the presentation was from the back end of last year, and so we are expecting interesting shifts when the latest data comes through in the summer, reflecting the significant social change that has been thrust upon households in a short period of time. I personally will be fascinated to see how the numbers have shifted during this current fieldwork. That data will be released in July exclusively in our recently relaunched consumer surveys module in MediaTel Connected. With a powerful search engine spanning five key UK media surveys and Barb, Ofcom, Rajar, YouGov and our own connected screens, it provides a visually driven intuitive interface. It allows analysis of hundreds of survey questions spanning topics including viewing, listening, reading, shopping, gaming, telephony screens and devices. And if you'd like to know more about this data, the next field work or the, the wider consumer surveys app, please do drop me a line. My contact details are on screen and I would love to hear from you. Thanks very much.